thank you again for joining us as we continue through this Advent season through our midweek worship series. And we are now in week three of Paul Oman's Drawn to the Word. As we see paintings come to life, uh, as we move through and hear scriptures and music. And with that being said, our scripture this afternoon, this evening, is from the Gospel of John, beginning in chapter 1, verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please enjoy as we continue and see what Paul Oman brings to life for us. was a man sent from God, John, a witness to testify regarding the light, the light that from the very beginning of creation was the light of all humankind, the light that shines in the darkness and is not overcome by it. John's purpose was to proclaim this truth so that all might believe. Believe in this light, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah.
John knew he was not the light, and thus pointed away from himself, seeking not glory for himself, not marketing himself and his greatness or his power, his status, his product or service, but rather that of the one who would deliver. Power and dominance had become centralized in Jerusalem in Jesus' day, both religious and political, despising each other, but forcing each other's hand when necessary to accomplish self-interests. And the coming Messiah? He was to return in some form of power and glory, like their King David from a thousand years before ruling with military power and dominance, expanding their geographic territories, a view of earthly power confused with that of the kingdom of God. Or maybe it would be a Messiah like Moses who led their people out of bondage in Egypt to the promised land. The religious people knew that the Lord would raise up such a prophet as Moses, who would restore the kingship to that of the time of David. But how, when? They were watching, waiting, and hoping. Or maybe the Messiah would be like Elijah, for their scriptures said, See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. But now... In the wilderness, away from the centralized power of Jerusalem, word spreads about an Elijah-like figure proclaiming the word of the Lord in the desert. Could this be the Messiah? Let's go and see. Hoping for the Messiah, but afraid of losing power and position, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask this man who he was. I am not the Messiah, said John. Then who are you, Elijah? I am not. Well then, are you a prophet? No, said John. Who are you then? We need an answer to take back to the authorities who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. John had been baptizing. Jews were coming out to him to be baptized, while usually only converts to Judaism were baptized. But if this one might be the Messiah, and being baptized might bring about the Messianic age, we will do this to try and bring it about, is perhaps what some of them were thinking. God, however, is not manipulated by us, 
the creatures by our schemes and our self-serving desires. from the waters of the Jordan River and into the crowds surrounding him. John proclaimed, I baptize you with water, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Then, like now, we question and doubt, seeking to disprove God's word with our disbelief in God's promises, grasping for something else. We hold on to authority in earthly things, where and when we can, even propping up our own self-made dreams and goals with the name of Jesus. But God, God will now reveal the upside-down nature of the kingdom of heaven. Blessing will not come as power, profit, or position. Rather, it will appear as apparent weakness in this world. It will not come as vengeance, wrath, anger, and destruction, getting even with enemies, no rather as healing for your broken-heartedness, freedom to all that holds you captive, release from darkness, forgiveness of your sins, true joy and peace rather than artificial happiness. The one who will come will say, Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the land. The merciful shall be shown mercy, the peacemakers will be called the children of God. In all of this you may receive a prophet's reward, that is, persecution, even death, as John would soon be beheaded. But rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. This is the promise that your Lord gives to you not from some distant far-off place, but right down and in all of life as you are experiencing it, your Lord comes to you again this day to say, I know you, I forgive you, and I love you.
Thank you again for joining us. And go today with the blessing of the God of Advent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Depart in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.